Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the A1 Air Quality Consultants post-game call-in show. Presented to you by our friends over at A1 Air Quality Consultants. Buying property, remodeling, maybe thinking about purchasing a second home or an investment property. Have A1 Air Quality Consultants perform asbestos testing before purchasing or renovating for safety of all parties involved. Give them a call or text today at 864-619-2092. That's 864-619-2092. You can also shoot them an email at a1airqualityconsultants at gmail.com. And be sure to head over to their website, a1airqualityconsultants.com, and give them a follow on social media as well. Be sure to check them out and tell them that Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, what's going on? We are live. The A1 Air Quality Consultants Post Game Call and Show South Carolina Beach Jacksonville State 38 to 28. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Appreciate our friends over at A1 Air Quality Consultants for their love and support of not just this post game call in show, but the Spurs Up show as a whole as well. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right in the phone lines, guys. 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377. South Carolina getting the W, escaping complete disaster. And uh, Gamecocks get the first win in about a month and a half. So here we are, taking your questions, your comments. Your calls, everything in between. The chat is buzzing. Let's go ahead and jump straight to the phone line. Call from George. George, what's up, man? You're on the air. Chris, man, I ain't going to lie to you, man. I'm fucked ass up right now. But, man, I got a bone to pick with this South Carolina team, man. How do we give up 28 points to Jacksonville State? Uh, really, really bad coaching, not a lot of talent. And I think that's the product you get, man. Let's just stop. Let's just stop trying to sugarcoat it. And it is what it is, man. You're just not a good football team. So I, I'm happy that South Carolina got the win. I said it in my post game though. This probably is not going to be the place. It's not going to be the place to come for joy this week. I don't have a lot of joy right now. That wasn't a very joyous experience watching that game. Uh, missed tackles all over the place. You know, I'm really happy that Stone Blanton made the big play to lock in the victory, but he was abysmal all day long, and uh, most of the defense was as well. So, you know, you got guys doing the whole seatbelt celebration in the secondary when you got one of the worst secondaries in college football, and you got guys getting called for an excessive celebration penalty when you get a pick to lock up the 10-point win over Jacksonville State, guys acting as if they just won the SEC championship. So, there's a lot wrong, man. There's a lot wrong, and uh, I, I don't know, man. I think it's a mix hey, of not hey. very good talent, not very good coaching, and then you get a not very good result. Hey, like that pinhead Beamer said, the good thing we practiced like it was the Super Bowl. We fucking suck, man. We need to make some changes around here pretty quick. I, I, I wish I could argue you more so that you were wrong, but unfortunately, after a game like that, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So, George, I appreciate the call, man. We're going to keep it rolling. Thank you so much for calling in. Guys, phone lines are open. I, you know, I, I'm still behind Shane Beamer, um, but games like this are worrisome. They are. I'd be lying to you if I told you they're not, guys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we should be find some joy. What I, I'm just, I'm not going to do it, man. I'm not going to do it because, and I, and I feel, I don't know, like I'm normally someone celebrate awesome. the wins when you get them. Panic Ritter. But I don't know, man. I'm disgusted. Panic Ritter, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Good. Here's the thing. All right. We need to fire Clayton White. He needs to take some of his players with him, maybe a couple of the coaches. And I promise Thursday I will say my name is Tyler, and I'll call the Beamer Show, and I'll pull a Tyler. Maybe that will help us win. Do it. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Panic Ritter, you're the man. Thank you so much. Great stuff from Panic Ritter, guys. Uh, again, this is not going to be the show. That, you know, I be fair. There are positives. Spencer Rattler played his ass off, right? Played his ass off. Xavier Leggett is playing his tail off less than 100%. Mario Anderson is a guy that gives his guts on every single play. Stone Blanton made the big play when he had to. Great job reading the wheel route. 
outside of that, if you want to crown them and you want to celebrate that, you can go right ahead. I'm I'm not doing it, man. I'm not doing it. I, I just – this team stinks. This program is in disarray right now. Staff changes absolutely 110%. I'd prefer them happen today, but, you know, it'll probably be till after the season. Those have got to happen. All of a sudden, Vandy looks really, really interesting. Really interesting. Kentucky and Clemson look pretty damn unlikely, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it, it's just the Beamer... The Beamer, year three of the Beamer era has gone awesome. so far John off the rails. I, I just, I would have never Except predicted it. John Edward, you're on the air. Good. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing fantastic, man. How's it going? Good. I, look, I know some people may not be happy with how I went today, but like you said early in the week, Monday through Wednesday, we just want to win a football game. And that's why I'm looking at it. This is the first step of hopefully four. So, I'm looking at it in a positive way, I guess. Like, that was not pretty in the slightest. But a win's a win. It's just real good to win a football game. Fair enough. Got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's, that's it. Win's a win. My ass. That, that's it. Just, just, hey, just win the game. South Carolina yeah. won the game. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. That is a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. Yeah. 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 All right, brother. Thanks. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, John Edward. John Ebert has found his joy. A win is a win is a win. He's absolutely correct. I'd throw a thousand on it right now. South Carolina ain't winning the next three games. I'll put a thousand up. Anybody wants to go bet me thousand dollars? I'll put up right now. South Carolina ain't making a bowl game. There ain't no damn way. This team that we just watched is going to win three in a row. There is no way. None. 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 Zero. Zilch. Nada. Thousand dollars. Anybody wants to bet? Call from Trevor. To accept, press one to send a voice. Trevor, you're on the air. Hey, Chris, how's it going, man? What's going on, man? Doing well. my opinions on first of all i want to start with i mean blanton saves the game right there if he doesn't make that pick six we lose the game right that's a fact yes yes i I think there's a good chance jacksonville state goes in there and scores at minimum that game is is tied i mean they're they're well within field goal range so yes stone blanton absolutely saved the game right there absolutely saved the game so i want to start with the one bright Lot of the day today, which was his pick six at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. All right. First of all, what are we doing in a dog fight with a team in the Sun Belt Conference or an SEC team? That just that doesn't happen. You, you don't you don't do that as an SEC team. All right. I I, I look at this team, man. Unfortunately, I look at this team as a. I don't know, man. There's just so many FCS players and D2 players littered throughout the roster that this is a team that's pretty pretty, pretty close to on that level with an All-American quarterback. That's, that's just kind of where you are, man. I mean, it's – it's, and, I mean, you can kick and scream and get frustrated all you want, but you look at the roster and who South Carolina is playing with, and it makes sense. Like, that's who they went after and got in the portal. So, it's stunning how bad the defense is. I will say that it's stunning how bad they are. But, uh, you know, I, I talked about it all week. You know, I, I picked 38 to 27. I was pretty damn close to score. This felt like Georgia State all over again. And uh, similar to that game, oh, right, similar to that game, like you that. you won that game because the opponent bailed you out. That's why you won. South Carolina 100% deserved to lose that football game, 100%. But thankfully, Jacksonville State, a couple I, of fumbles, pick six, you have a 10-point win. So, uh, I'm glad it happened. I, I, I'd much rather see South Carolina win the game than lose the game. But I, I, I posted this late in that ball game that at that point, win or lose, this game was going to feel like a loss. And unfortunately, just immediate reaction, it does. It, it, it feels I have the similar feeling whether South Carolina would have won or lost the game. I'm, I'm happy they won. I really am. I'm happy they won because at least there's some reason to show up and watch next week. But I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you. I'm, 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 I'm certainly, I'm not throwing a parade because you beat Jacksonville State by ten and got a, got a win for the first time in a month and a half. That oh, is, no. 
I, yeah, that, that's just that's just not me. It's just not me. I mean, and on top of that, the problem with our defense all year has been our passing defense, right? Mm-hmm. And then Jacksonville State goes and rushes for over 200 yards on us. I mean, we didn't even come close to that. Right. Like, what the hell is going on? We run <laughs> our little, little shitty bubble screens and slants behind the line of scrimmage and stop routes with no blocking. All of a sudden, it's second and ten to start every every damn drive. I swear to God, every damn drive, second and ten. Then you want to go fool around with Dak Joyner, who I love, great player, but you know when you put him in the Wildcat, you know what we're doing. It's going to be a Dak Joyner, Dak Joyner, QB power. They know every team knows what we're doing there. Like, and you still do it on third and one. And then the next play, you call timeout. You burn a timeout in the third quarter and decide to punt the ball. I mean, it's actually unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. They, and, they're, they're, and, and, yeah and go ahead. Thank God for Xavier Leggett. He is our <laughs> entire, entire offense. Mm-hmm. If we don't have the deep ball to Xavier Leggett, I mean, we're losing that game 30 to zero. Yep, Xavier Leggett bailed South Carolina out today for sure. He absolutely did. I don't know why JSU didn't make the adjustment to. I mean, that not you know they were just leaving him wide open, which was a bold bold move. And uh, you know, I'm I'm glad they did that, but it was a very very bold move for sure. So um, bold move, and even even the commenters on the game were mm, saying that they were right. like, "Why isn't JSU adjusted?" and I mean, I guess we just got lucky, but I mean, that's not going to, we're not going to get lucky like that against, you know, teams like Clemson and teams like Kentucky. Mm -hmm. All facts, man. Hey, I appreciate you, man. We're going to let you go. We're going to keep it moving here. Got a lot of calls coming in. 843-790-3377. I see this guy right here, Chuck Burkett, who's commenting, talking shit. Chuck. You know what? At least people have the nuts to call in. So, Chuck, if you would like to call in and spread your knowledge and tell everybody why they're wrong, the phone lines are open for you, too. But if you're not going to do that, then pipe down, slapdick. That's all I have to say. Because if people want to be upset because of the performance they just watched, what right do you have to tell them not to be so? Let's, Let's crown JSU as the best thing out there. Like, give me a break, dude. Give me a freaking break. So, if you want to call in, Chuck, have some nuts. Drop your nuts. Call in. If not, pipe down. Find some joy. STFU, as I was told this week. Anyways, phone lines are back open. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, again, th- there are positives to take away, but I'm I'm not going to sit here and, and – <laughs> I would look like a damn fool if I sit here all week long. Come on, guys. What a great win over JSU. We're the best now. It's just not. It's just, this this team is what it is, what it is, and uh, that's fine. That's fine. But this season is about mercifully getting to the end of it and then addressing the problems in the offseason. Chuck Burkett, it's on the screen, my guy. 843-790-3377. If you need me to say it slower for you, Chuck, I will. 843, ready? Write it down. 790 STFU. No, I'm kidding. 3377. Anyways. Oh. Anyways, love to hear from you guys. I had to do not disturb on, so I do apologize. Some of you probably trying to call in. You're wondering what the hell's going on. So I apologize, guys, for not being full of joy as I should be. Maybe, maybe, maybe 24 hour rule I will be. Maybe 24 hours later I will be. Uh, how about Arkansas beating Florida? That was a pick of mine. I picked Arkansas. They get the dub. Happy for Sam Pittman, man. That's a great W. Great W for Sam Pittman. a boy. Love that. Love that. Great W for Sam Pittman. Wow. Also, it is 7-3 Missouri up on Georgia. Wow. Okay. We got a ball game. We got a ball game. Anybody? Anybody out there wants to call in? Somebody texts in at 1245 today. 
This is the perfect game to get up early and rest our players, heal up, and get other guys experience. But we're going to let this game be close. And boy, was he right. Talk of the walk. What's going on? You're on the air. Me? You are on the air. Yes, sir. What's going on? Yep. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, Well, I just wanted to agree with everything you're saying. And even bad players can be coached not to make these kinds of mistakes. And um, I guess what I see is a head coach that doesn't know offense or defense and only knows the teams, and they're not even performing now. So I appreciate your show. I think you're spot on. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. And, uh, again, happy to get the win, but I'm just – I'm disgusted with how it happened. I, I can't sugarcoat it, man. So, I appreciate it. I I turned it off. I turned it off in the second half. I guess I'll watch it on the replay now that we won, but I just wasn't going to let them subject me to that anymore. And, my friend, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So, uh, Appreciate you. Yeah, man, appreciate I appreciate you. the call. I, to his point, I'll say this, though. Like, I – I feel like we all think there's more talent on the defense than what we see. You know what I mean? I think there's – I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I think there's more talent on the defense than what we see. I, I could be totally wrong. I, I This – you know, I, and I'm not saying the talent's great by any means. I'm not saying that at all. But, you know, I think a game like today, it goes to show you that, you know, the improvement in, for example, the rushing yard numbers is – it's pure fool's gold, man. Awesome. It just Taylor from Cane Bay. Cane Bay, stand up. You're on the air. Uh, hey, I'd rather sit down today, Chris. <laughs> man, these guys stink. You know, that, yeah. I don't. I like Battle said the other week. You know, I hope he gave away all his um his Gamecock merchandise. With these guys, the last caller was right, man. Mm. We these guys can't be that bad. It's got to be schematic and uh, schemes just. This is just a complete shit show at this time. Thank goodness Stone Blanton made one damn play this year. Hey, keep up the good work, brother. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Great stuff. Great call. Great call. I mean, listen, man, there's going to be people that hear the sound of my voice and hear what I have to say and be upset and kick and scream. Those are the same slap dicks that get all upset on social media every single week, and I don't really give a damn, man. That's, I mean, my business continues to thrive and thrive and go up and grow and make make money. and what You know, it doesn't matter, but it just it's laughable. It's awesome. laughable. Derek. Just come together and hey, we just we all see it. What's up, man? You're on the air. Hey, man, I, I really appreciate you. I got just a few quick things to say, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly think at the end of the day, we need to put some fire up underneath Ray Tanner's ass as well because he's the one that hired this dude. Um, it's it's just a shit show out there. Um, the problem that we have is if you think about it, it's like buying the damn new car when you got. Uh, Georgia, and they got uh, a warranty. Yeah, we go to the buy here, pay here, and we got a damn 30-day warranty. We have no, we have nothing. And this is embarrassing to Carolina fans. Hey, I really appreciate your show. Keep doing the good work, man. Thank you so much for keeping us informed. Yeah, man, appreciate you. Thanks so much for the call. Um, Yeah, man. I mean, I, I again, I look at it this way. Listen, I'm happy that South Carolina got a win. I'm happy. I, I'm, I'm glad it's not a loss. But criticizing anyone for being upset with the product that we just watched, you just missing the mark, man. You're missing the mark. It's it's that was an embarrassing win. I mean, that's if there's such a thing, that was an embarrassing win. Hey, Chuck called in. Chuck, if you want to call back in, man. Had a had a caller on the line. I always put the line on do not disturb when somebody is called in when they're on the air to pay respect to them. So Chuck, you want to call back in, man? Listen, you could give me some joy. Here we go. Call from. What's going on? You're on the air. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, for a second there, I thought we were actually going to lose to a team that had the same damn mascot as us, and that would have been unacceptable. Uh, just pretty disgusted, man. I mean, Happy we got a win because it keeps the, the dream alive. But, I mean, I, I think we all know that dream's probably not going to last very long um, of, of making a bowl game. Just wondering, so what, So do you think that it's 100% Clayton White's gone after the year, or is there a fucking world where he's coming back? I, I mean, you know, I guess nothing is 
right? I mean, who knows? But I would be just flat out stunned. I'd be stunned if Clayton White is not let go. And because it becomes one of those things, man, kind of like what happened with Satterfield last year. Like, you know, Shane Beamer is allowed to run his program the way he wants to, but he's going to hear it. I mean, they're, you know, boosters are fans with influence, right? They're the ones supplying the funds, per se. And so there's going to be pressure. There's going to be pressure to make a move, right? So I, I, I just, I don't see a, I don't see a world. I don't see a world in which there are not staff changes. I don't see a world where that doesn't happen. I really don't. And one more quick thing. Uh, kudos to Spencer and Leggett because, man, without those dudes, this team is unwatchable. I mean, th it's not going to end up meaning a whole bunch probably at the end of the year, but they really, both of them have had a real banner year. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I guess congratulations to those guys. But other than that, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Appreciate yeah. it, Chris. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. And, and, and again, let's do as we do every week. Let's take a moment. Give our props to Spencer Rattler, to Xavier Leggett, to Mario Anderson. I'll give props to Josh Simon, too. I'll give props to Josh Simon. L let's give those guys props. Without a great offensive performance today, you don't win the football game, right? Without Spencer Rattler throwing for nearly 400, you don't win the football game. So, like, credit to them. Credit to them. Truly, credit to them. Call from Bates West Kevin. What's up, man? You're on the air. I'm on the air. Hey, uh, well, after watching today's game, I'm going to keep it really short, but mm -hmm. we're not going to win out. I don't think we can beat any team in the SEC. Um, you guys had us at like 30% chance of winning out, and you're, we're never going to do that. I mean, I love this team, but we're not good. We're not good. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances of us winning one more game? Mm -hmm. And I think it should be Vanderbilt. I'll, I'll just yeah. leave it at that. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you. I, listen, he's dejected. He's down and out. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I mean, this, I tell you this. Somebody asked me, what do I think about the Vandy game? I, I don't know yet, guys. I, I'm not going to sit here, um, you know, moments after a game just ended and make a prediction for next week. But nothing will surprise me. <laughs> I mean, nothing. And, you know, that's how I came into today. Like, at some point, you have to realize what you are. And it's like, there's nothing that will surprise me. Just nothing. Call from Robert Altman. Oh, crap. Robert, call back in. My bad, man. I was trying to put somebody on, on uh, trying to send somebody the voicemail, and I hung up on our guy, Robert Altman. Robert, call back in, my man. I do apologize. 843-790-3377. Again, Gamecocks get their third win of the year. And sure, keep the dream alive. You win the next three in a row. You get to a bowl game. You know what? I, I don't know, man. I, like This is such a Gamecock thing. Let me talk myself into it. But, you know, may, maybe it's a situation in which South Carolina wasn't fired up or wasn't ready to play. But, like, if that's the case, like, that's a problem in itself. So, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm not predicting Vandy right now. I, I don't. I don't see the path, though. I don't see much of a path. Uh, I don't think you're beating both Kentucky and Clemson. I tell you that right now. Call from Robert Altman. Robert, what's going on? You're on the air. What's up, man? Watching you live. Um, just got finished watching the whole entirety of the game and mm -hmm. looking at the 400 plus yards we gave up there uh, defensively, and just wondering if this is Clayton White's final ride. Who's out there that would replace him? Is there some hot names out there? Is there somebody on staff that could come right in and we could plug in and keep this thing rolling? Or is it kind of just an up for grabs, see what happens at the end of the year, coach and turnover type thing? Mm -hmm. I, admittedly, man, I have not stopped and looked at, like, who's available or anything like that. I'll probably wait till there's an opening. Um, but I, I think definitely the writing's on the wall, man. The move's got to be made. I, I think the writing's on the wall. So. Um, you know, it's just like you mentioned, another 400 plus yard day of yards allowed. They rushed for over 200. I mean, I, and this was a JSU team that couldn't really throw the ball that well, and they still just gutted you. They, they just gutted you. So it, to me, it's a very easy decision. We'll see if it's the same for Beamer. Well, we'll see. First game of the season, I said if we don't do something with the defensive alignment, secondary, 
we were going to win two or three, four games, maybe get in there. Um, they just look really out of line in the deep in the secondary, and I don't know if that's on. It always falls on the DC, but I don't know what's going on with the secondary at all. It just mm-hmm. seems to be completely um, can they look very confused on a lot of plays. So, indeed, no, you're right. Absolutely, but, it's same old, same old. It seems all season long. So, but hey, great, good for the win, and hopefully, uh, we'll hopefully we'll find some joy in this and pick up yeah. another win or two. All right, indeed. We'll see you guys. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Find some joy, he says. Find some joy. Indeed. Find some joy. Chuck keeps trying to call in and can't get in. Uh, Chuck, you're more than welcome to call in, man. Like I said, hey, listen, I, I, I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear you out, and we can talk ball. And I mean, I value all feedback, man. So, if Chuck, you want to call in? Yeah, hey, give us some perspective. Maybe we need some perspective, man. Maybe we need some perspective from somebody. Heck, I don't know. I, I, I didn't, admittedly, guys, I didn't expect to be dejected after a W, but... Call from the gardener. What's going on? You're on the air. Um, yes, this is Corey Gardner. Um, I think our biggest problem is on defense. I mean, I think offense is suspect here and there, but mm-hmm. our defense just can't, can't stop a cold. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the defense, in my opinion. It's been the defense all year. I mean, the offense isn't perfect by any means. But, I mean, especially at home, you know, Spencer Rattler, the offense, they, they do everything you could ask. And it's, you know, you give up over – I mean, you give up 31 – or, well, excuse me, 28. 28 to, to Jacksonville State, man, and you look at the numbers and how it happened. It just, you know – I mean, dude, you had to win the turnover battle in that game for nothing to win by 10 points. That's right. Win by 10 points. Yeah. So. Yes. I mean, if it weren't for the turnovers, you lose. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I would agree but, with you, man. Um, it's 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 defense is where I would say ninety percent of the problems. Like when you look at what went wrong this season, it's defensively. That that's that's where it, the conversation starts. But I feel like that Shane Beamer can go out and get a good defense coordinator for this team, and we can bounce back. I mean, I don't I don't think Shane Beamer is done or can't come back. I mean, I think he's the man, and I think he'll find somebody to lead this defense and get us back where we need to be. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's, that, that is what you have to hope for at this point. That's what you have to hope for. Oh, of so, course. Yeah, that's of what course. you got to hope for. So, I mean, this is, listen, this, but, is the uh, same, this is the same guy in Beamer that led South Carolina to wins over Tennessee and Clemson and how the season finished. So, you know, you got to keep faith. He can, he can turn it around. But, uh, you know, man, I, I got to be honest that with each game that passes that does not go well and results like these and win or loss, whatever, uh, you get further and further removed from the Tennessee and the Clemson games of last year. And at some point, you're not going to bring that up. You know what I mean? At some point, it's a, well, what have you done for me lately type of ordeal? You know what I mean? So, a uh, lot. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, I've already forgot about Tennessee Clinton's wins. I'm where I'm at now, but I still think Beamer mm-hmm. is the guy we need to be able – he just got to go get a defense coordinator, and then I think we can move forward. But, I mean, we've got to get a defense coordinator. Hey, 100%. 100%. Well said, my friend. I appreciate you calling in. Great insight. Uh- let me uh let me get to this voicemail. So Chuck wants me to play this voicemail. He's tried to call in, can't get in, but he did leave two voicemails. We're gonna play this latest one. Let's see what Chuck had to say. Hey Chris, second attempt. Anyway, love your show, man. I love all the uh the people that are weighing in and uh just love listening. A lot of days I have to listen to your show on the podcast late in the evening. But uh if you move to nine to eleven, I'll definitely be there every day. Hey Bo. With uh, our offensive line woes right now and Juice Wells being out, it, it, it's just turmoil. And our defense, good God. Uh, anyway, what can I say? Uh, that we definitely need to change there. And I'll repeat myself. Chris, I am not a slack. I love you, brother. See you. <laughs> Chuck, all love, man. I take it back. Chuck Burkett, no longer a slap dick. Listen, I'm a slap dick, too. We're all slap dicks here. Uh, those of us rocking the garnet and black right now, I feel like we, I feel like a slap dick at least. So Chuck Burkett, first class, man. I appreciate it. All is fair and love and war. And I don't know, man, I'm just a dejected slap dick. So that's all it is. 
Uh, Casey Shug talking about Shane Beamer. I, listen, I, I definitely don't think you dump Shane Beamer right now. I'm starting to grow concerned, though. I, I am. I just am, dude. I, I ain't going to front. I'm starting to get awesome. really worried. And they hung up. Okay, so somebody tried to call in. Um, for whatever reason, they hung up. Either way, phone line's open, guys. 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377. Here we go. Jump back to it. Call from. They hung up again. All right, let's go to the next caller. Call from. Jared from Cane Bay. Jared from Cane Bay, you're on the air. Kane Bay stand up. Kane Bay stand Chris, up. I'd like to nominate Shane. I'd like to nominate Shane Beamer Dick of the Week. Slap Dick of the Week. Okay. I mean, dude, we're a uh, entire coaching staff away from being a mediocre team at this point, and it's kind of dis- disappointing me just all the way through. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, it's ugly, man. It's it's ugly. It's ugly. So, do you think there's any that any of these coaches get let go before the end of the season? I think that before the end of the season, I I, I doubt it. I don't think Beamer's a fire coaches. Uh, I don't think Beamer's a fire coaches middle of the season kind of guy. I, I'd be open to it. I'd be. I'd love it. I'd love to see it. But I I don't. I don't think. I mean, dude, you think about it. It took abs absolute embarrassment in Gainesville to get Marcus Satterfield demoted behind closed doors. So, no, I don't think Shane Beamer's firing anybody. Hey, Chris, love, love the show. And, uh, man, I wouldn't have let Clayton White walk back out after halftime. I would have just fired him. <laughs> That's fair. Kane Bay, stand up. Kane Bay, stand on business. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven. Guys, phone lines are still open. You know, again, maybe as the week wears on, I'll I'll, I'll find more joy. Maybe so, but uh, I just I don't have a lot of it right now, man. I'm 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 happy that ball game's over. I'm really tired of South Carolina. It feels like wasting my Saturdays, wasting my time. It, you know, it, it, and I hate to say it that way. That sounds bad, but like God Almighty, dude, it's just tough. Call from Lewis. Lewis, you're on the air. Awesome, man. Chris, thanks for taking my call. I want to get your thoughts on on something, man. Listen, I think Rattler's been Mm -hmm. amazing this year with everything he's had to face. But, you know, I keep thinking about these long shots that we take to Nick Harbour. And and I'm thinking Rattler, I think, might just have to lead him a little bit more. I don't think Nick right now can adjust Mm -hmm. and make some of those one-on-one catches yet. I mean, he's done it on a few of them, but what are your thoughts about just getting him out there, run, let him run wild, and try to see if you can out throw him on the pass? Yeah, I mean, that's you got to go to your bread and butter, which is the passing game, and, and letting Rattler go downfield more often. I mean, the, the play calling certainly, and I, I'm not going to be hard on Dabble Loggins uh, this season because of the issues on the offensive line, what have you, but it's I think the jury's still out. I, I mean, I think that's fair. Uh, it's been one year. Uh, you know, I, I think Dabble Loggins is an upgrade over Marcus Satterfield, but that's about it. I, I don't know beyond that conversation if he's the answer long term. Long term, done a great job being the quarterback whisperer that Spencer Rattler obviously needed. But you know, there's a lot left to be desired still, man. There's a lot left to be desired. So, um, I, I would agree I with you, man. Running a yeah, go ahead. I, I think he's running a I think he's running a really balanced offense, and I think that's his mo. I think he's a really yeah. smart guy. I just wonder if we got to let it rip like mm-hmm. we did at the end of the last season mm-hmm. and just try to run up the score on some of these last games, just play free. And it's like every time they let it rip, things seem to go well. So it's like, why don't they do that more? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. going down yeah. the field to 17 is a pretty good game plan. It seems like it works out pretty well every time you do it. That's right. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you taking my call. I'm optimistic. Let's see how the last three games go. I hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the call. Really good stuff, guys. Uh, phone lines are back open, 843-790-3377 here on this Saturday, November the 4th. Cockvember. Cockvember is still alive and well, I suppose. Cockvember is still alive and well.
Find some joy, he says. Call from Bruce, Bruce, and back. Uh, Bruce, what's going on? You're on the air. Hey, Chris. Uh, I watched the game today, and as some of most all of the Gamecock fans, just kind of speechless. But mm-hmm. half jokingly, I actually named today's game um, for fun. I called it the Battle of the Bojangles Cup because we got the Bojangles right beside the stadium, and it was the Gamecocks playing the Gamecocks, which is technically two chickens, and it seemed like it. That was appropriate for today's game. Two cops going after each other. And somehow, by the grace of God, uh, Jacksonville State handed us the turnover right before half on a silver platter. And then right at the end of the game, their quarterback was like, Merry Christmas, or early Christmas present for Stone Blatt. I mean, he pretty much underhanded it to him. And take that away, we probably lose to the game cops. And we go from having a little bit of hair to no hair because we pulled it all out watching the game. And I'm just exasperated, man. Our defense can't stop a nosebleed, as you said, and our secondary can't cover. I mean, how many times can you throw a deep ball and our secondary's out there looking like they're walking in the park and not even looking for the ball? They just don't know what to do. And offensive line played a little bit better. The announcers made it seem like our offensive line was playing like the Chicago Bears in the 80s. But I don't say they're great. Rattler and Rattler and Goulaget was our whole offense. And um, the play calling's got a uh, nine. Kai Kroger had a decent game, but at least we won the battle of the Bojangles Cup and got some good chicken today. And I'll let you go. And thanks for all you do, Chris. Go game cop. Appreciate it, Bruce. You're the man. Really good stuff from Bruce Bruce there from Darlington. Uh, guys, we'll keep it moving. Your thoughts, your questions, your comments. This show is for you, the post game call in show presented to you by our friends over at A1 Air Quality Consultants. We appreciate them. Their love and support of the Spurs Up show and of the post-game call-in show. This was a horrid day to be a Gamecock in so many more ways than one. That is a fact. Call from Clayton White. <sighs> Clayton White, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Are you hiring? <laughs> I, I should be, I suppose. I don't know. Why, why do you ask? Well, shoot. I mean, I, I just – I can't obviously coach the defense. I don't know. But maybe no, but really and truly, I mean. Maybe podcasting it, it, bad, is your game. Man. Maybe podcasting really is your game. It's awful. Yeah. Then what now? Go ahead. I was just saying, maybe podcasting is your game if you can't call a defense. So. Uh, I mean, shoot. They might, they might get too many leaks on that or something. I mean. <laughs> no, really and truly. I mean, it was. Uh, I'm thankful we won the ball game, obviously. Mm-hmm. But Beamer's going to have to make a move at the, the end of the year. Mm-hmm. We know this. Yeah. We know it. Did I want it to be a nail biter against Jackson State? No. But, like you say, a win's a win's a win. A so win is a win is a win, my friend. A win. Yeah, a win is a win, I suppose. That's all we can do. We got to find. Oh, hold on. We got to find some joy. I'm still looking, man. I'm still looking for joy. If you find any, let me know. Uh, yeah, it might be in the bottom of a 12 ounce can, but that's all we can do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Right. Birds up, stuck up, cop. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the call. Might be in the bottom of a bottle somewhere, but we're going to find some joy, damn it. We're going to fade them, sto- them stogies that get smoked either way, right? Shane Beamer, after the game, said this, quote, we are going to celebrate the heck out of that game. I, I just, I don't know, man. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to STF you. from Derek. Derek, you're on the air. Man, I'm sorry for calling you, babe, but I got one real serious question mm-hmm. for you. Our record is what, like two and six, two and seven? Is that about right? You said what again now? Our record. What is our So now record? the record is three and six. Three and six with three to play. Okay. Okay, three and six. Do you think because I really I really do believe that we wasted uh Spencer Rattler for two years, at least this year right here. And I understand injuries and all of that stuff. With that being said, with that being said, would you try and get the little rookie in uh sellers for the last three games 
keep his eligibility for next year, but um, allow him to play so we can kind of get a head start on that. I'll hang up and hear what you got to say about that, man. Thank you again. Yeah, man, I appreciate you. Always a pleasure to hear from you. I I hear what he's saying. You're you're not going to see that. South Carolina is not going to mail it in and get ready for next year and Rattler go sail off. And I mean, they want to get to a bowl game. That's the goal, right? They want to get to a bowl game. Now, I think if you – if you lose next week, or you, I, mean, I, I just, I don't see it happening because you're not going to do it against Clemson. Like you're going to play your best twenty-two, right? You're going to play your best twenty-two. You're not going out there and playing some guys who don't deserve to be out there. So, I mean, I'm not saying Lenoris Sellers like that, but you know what I mean. Like, you're, I just don't see that happening. So, it's it's a fun hypothetical, right? It's fun in it's fun in theory. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't see that happening at all. So, guys, phone line's back open, 843-790-3377. Again, guys, thank you all so much for engaging, calling in. The post-game call-in show has been a massive success despite the on-field results this season, which, you know, is is truly a blessing and something I don't take for granted because, guys, admittedly, it's really easy for folks to jump ship and uh, just mail it in when the season doesn't go well. And uh, losing, obviously, does not help business. Performances like that don't help business. But you guys continue to show up weekly, call into the show. And again, this show's for you to get your thoughts out there. There's something you want to say, you got a reaction, you got feedback, whatever it might be. This is it. This is for you, man. This isn't a post-game call-in show where I'm a, or a post-game show where I'm going to rant at you and, and, and blow smoke call up your from. ass. So, Taylor from Taylor's. Taylor from Taylor's. You're on the air. Hey, is uh, is Coach Beaver there? <laughs> I wish he was. If he was, I'd put you on the line with him, man. Okay, I just got one question. Um, for six million dollars, how many wins should that buy us this year? You think? <laughs> hey, the the good news side note, by the way, Tyler, or uh, yeah, Taylor from Taylor's, right? Taylor, Taylor no, yeah. that's Tyler from Spartan. Right, right. right. I got I got confused. No, yeah, Taylor from Taylor's. The good news is Shane Beamer. We all know he's on social media. He's going to hear everything you have to say. So I would say go ahead and just say it. I think he'll probably come across it at some point. All right. Well, God, God bless you, Shane. Love you, buddy. We just got to get more than three. <laughs> very fair. I mean, that's very fair, my friend. That's a very fair request. All right. God bless. I hey, appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for the call. I, I mean, like I said, Shane Beamer, he's probably watching this right now, honestly, if we're being honest with ourselves. So, um, I mean, again, guys, it's – you can call me doom and gloom. You can tell me to find some joy. You can tell me to STFU, but it just ain't good enough, man. It ain't good enough, and I'm I'm sick from watching it. So, I've got – and let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say this, too, because I think there's a lot of people that don't realize this. Like – I'm a very joyous, positive person in my day-to-day life. You know what I mean? Like, in my normal life operations, I separate my fandom and that side of my life. And, like, I, I I separate that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't let the fandom stuff carry over. And, like, my I, I'm, still, I'm still fuming over a loss on Wednesday. Like, I, I stopped doing that when I was, like, 16 years old. You know what I mean? So, I'm a very joyous person. So, telling me to find some joy, like, I, I don't need joy. Like I'm grateful, bro. I got perspective. I got gratitude. Like I, I, I am, I am deliriously joyous in my day to day life. But this football team stinks, and watching this team doesn't bring me any joy. Heck, if I wanted more joy, I'd cut the TV off. I'd stop watching this team. That's how I'd get more joy. Call from Chuck Burkett Wagner. Chuck Burkett from Wagner. What's going on, man? I don't know if you heard earlier. We actually played your voicemail on the air as well, but go ahead, my friend. I appreciate you calling in. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. Yeah, man, I was listening. Hey, man, thanks. Love your show. Uh, I, I like all the participation from all the fellow callers, but the Kane Bay crowd, man, you, you just can't really call in for those guys. <laughs> but uh, I think Shane Beamer needs to take a page out of Dabo Swinney's playbook. And just uh, freaking uh, stage one of those damn calls. Uh, where you can just get your damn team pumped up, man. Because, you know, they took down Notre Dame today. But uh, with respect to the Cots, bud, uh, hey, man, our de- our defense, I don't know. Okay, it sucks. 
Clayton White, our secondary coach, and maybe the D line coach. Uh, although I like Travian, but but that they've got to make some changes. Uh, the O line, uh, you know, nine nine different O lines and nine games. Uh, Spencer's run for his life. I'm just glad for the damn win. And uh, I've watched Jack State five times this year. Those guys are pretty damn good, the Rich Rods. So, uh, hey, Bo, just wanted to let you know what the slap dick. I love your show. I love to call in from time to time. That's my first time, but uh, I'll keep doing it. Love you, Chris. Hey, Chuck, much love, my friend. And I, I apologize for singling you out and letting my frustration the Gamecocks called me speak to you in such manner. So I'm a slap dick for that. I'll own that. I appreciate you, Chuck. Great stuff. Great stuff. Chuck Burkett from Wagner. Shout out to Wagner, South Carolina. That's home of Wagner Sally, I'd imagine, right? The high school? I don't know. Anyways, uh, guys, we'll take a few more. 843-790-3377. Thank you all so much, man, for engaging, for uh, giving your thoughts, your opinions, everything else. Uh, yes, Archie. Chuck said, take a page from Dabo. Do the rant and Call use from. it to fire up the team. What's going on? Oh, and he hung up. Okay, guys, when you call in, don't hang up. Don't hang up. Here we go. Call from Matthew from Greenwood. Matthew from Greenwood, you are on the air. What's going on? What's up, Chris? Um, I do want to say that most champ would have found a way to lose that game. Also, why come when the ball's in the air, our DBs are just running into receivers instead of trying to find the ball? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of guys covering with their heads not turned around. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think I, this is – this is I said this weeks ago, so this isn't breaking news, but I think we really just genuinely realize how much we miss Cam Smith and Darius Rush and how good of players they were. Truly, because yeah. all due respect uh, to Marcellus Dial or Dino Forge, I know they made some plays today, but I mean, the secondary is just, it's night and day different from last year. Yeah, our defense has been, in my opinion, bad ever since Muschamp came there. And you would think the defense would have been good with Muschamp, but it's still bad. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what we need to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know, man. It, it's, you know, I, I know the talent's not necessarily great, but uh, I don't know, man. It should be better. It, 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 it should be better. So, it should be better. Yeah. Bottom line. I, I appreciate you taking the call, man. You have a great weekend. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great call. Again, thank you all so much for engaging, for giving your thoughts. Uh, Feel free to call in, 843-790-3377. Phone lines are open once again. Phone lines are open once again. Again, guys, we'll have full, you know, a full breakdown. And, and, and of course, I, on Monday, I'll give my thoughts, my opinions, my taking some time to go back, look at things, whatever. But just it's just it's just hard to celebrate a win like that, man. It's it's, you know, and I I, I just Everybody from the from the coaching staff to the players to everyone affiliated with Gamecocks football to the fan base should be disgusted with that performance. Like th th that was a disgusting display. True. Call from Pete. What's going on? You're on the air. Hey, good afternoon, Chris. It's uh, Pete from Virginia Beach. How you doing? I appreciate you, Pete. What's going on? Not too much, man. I just want to get your feedback. I had a couple couple thoughts, so don't mean to take up too much time. But uh, first one, I want I want to go back to last season real briefly. Um, two of our big playmakers, obviously Lloyd and Bell. You know, at the end of the season, there's a lot of excitement about our program. We're going to get a new OC, and you know, people were complaining about Satterfield. We knew we knew we were going to get a new guy, and two of our top guys leave when our program's for all intents and purposes on the rise. So, I guess to me that was kind of a red flag last year. Um, so, kind of want to get your thoughts on that. Um, I get I get sorry, sorry off that one. Yeah, I mean, is this just an nil thing or, or what? What are you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, to the transfer portal guys, you know the thing that I think we were encouraged by from the sense of you know they left, but they were all must champ guys. So it's like okay, well, it's no reason to panic. It's not a Beamer thing. 
I'm curious to see what happens this offseason. And if you are gutted like that again and that happens again, and then I think you start to really worry that it's more of a trend than uh, than we realize. So, you know, it's it's not – I mean, listen, man, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign when that happens. Like, I don't care what anybody says. It's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. So, yeah. uh, that was a that was the start officially to a really, really – dreadful off season for South Carolina. Let's call it what it is. And, uh, yeah. you know, man, it's, it's, it's like I've said before, man, that the results you see on the field and like, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with what I saw today. I'm, I'm disgusted with it, but I'm not surprised. I mean, I picked 38 to 27. And the reason I did is because yeah. South Carolina, when you go out and you go in the portal and you get a bunch of FCS and D two guys and lower level players and you plug them in and you try to go to battle with them. Well, you play like it. And that's how South yeah. Carolina plays. I mean, this South Carolina plays like a slightly above average conference USA team. That's how they play. I mean, that, that just and it's unfortunate, but it's just the reality at this point. Yeah, yeah. And then just sorry, just real quickly, if I may, um, the, the only other thing I wanted to say was in terms of like critiquing the team, and and you know, I've been I've been listening to your show, and there's comments that were made by fans like as the early as you know week two, week three, right? Like so, for example, people were saying, "Hey, Anderson's RB one," right? Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, you know, you don't, you all don't know what you're talking about. The, the coaches are with these guys all week. They obviously know better than us. And lo and behold, it's week six, week seven, and now all of a sudden Anderson's RB one. When people have been calling that for that since week two. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, is is that just because they developed that much more during the year, or are our coaches just not really great at recognizing talent? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but stuff that fans were calling for week two don't come to fruition until week six, and by then the season's wrecked. Yeah, to your point, you got to hope that it's guys develop and come along and improve and surprise because, to your point, the alternative is, well, those guys, a guy like Marvio Anderson was always the best option, and this coaching staff, for whatever reason, couldn't identify it. And that's that's a scary yeah. thought. That That's a real scary right. thought. So, to your point, man, I, I think that's something that has to be reevaluated of the offseason as well. Like, what are you doing with personnel why were there such egregious misses on personnel? Uh, it, it's it's got to be addressed. And I think we all agree that Monterio Hardesty probably should be out the door. I, I think that's just a given. So um, just add that. That's just another thing for him to – another damning thing against him. So, uh, yeah. It, it, there's been a lot of questionable personnel decisions, though, man. That's just one of many. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only other thing I'll say is just, you know, I think critiquing the team, that's the only way we're going to get better. I mean, it doesn't mean we don't love the team. We don't want them to succeed. We're always going to be pulling for them, win, lose, or whatever. But, I mean, you're just you're not, never going to get better if you just watch a, a product like that and, and that level of effort and just say, hey, that's okay. You know, that we're, we're just never going to get good if, if that's the attitude that people have. you, you got to be willing to, to call them out sometimes, in my opinion. 100%, man. Absolutely agree with you. You should be yeah. more concerned when people aren't saying anything because that means they've given up. Yeah, yeah, they just accepted mediocrity. So, yeah. but yeah, man, love your show. Appreciate your time. Hey, man, Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks so much. And I, I love the way he just ended that call there, because it's true. And I don't care if people don't like it. That's how I think he should operate. That's how fans should operate. You have a right as a fan, a consumer, to voice your displeasure when a product is not living up to the standard that it's supposed to. And, guys, we're not talking about, man, we expected you to win 10 games and you win nine. You won eight. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about almost losing to Jacksonville State on your home field. On the day that you honored Steve Spurrier and some of the greatest teams in school history. On that day. You're not a bad fan for, for calling out that play. You're not a bad fan for voicing displeasure over what you just witnessed. You should be more worried when people have nothing to say. It's, it's like coaching. When a coach is being hard on a player, that means he cares about him and he, he's being hard on him for a reason because he, he sees the potential in him. And he's like trying to get that out of the kid, trying to get that out of the player. You should be more concerned when the coach is quiet, isn't acknowledging the player because he's given up on that player. Not worth my time, not worth my energy. You should be more concerned about fans that are just like, meh, whatever. Anyways, 843-790-3377.
That's 843-790-3377 here on this November 4th. Cockvember! Still in play. Somehow, some way. Still in play. Marquise Riley says the Gamecocks should win the remainder. It may be a fight with Clemson. I don't know how you look at that game and say, oh, they should they should beat Kentucky. <laughs> ah, bro. I ain't, there, I ain't there with you. Thanks. Unfortunately. Here we go. What's going on, man? You're on the air. Hey, Chris, what's going on? Uh, James here. Um, I was just wondering if there's any other fans that feel this way. I appreciate everything that DK Joyner's done. But, man, when he gets the ball in his hand, I just have to hold my breath because two string tackles are fumbling the ball. And, like, just what y'all are talking about with Mario Anderson, why the hell did it take so long? Yeah, I don't know why it took so long, Mario Anderson. Because e- even if, even if like in practice, like one guy practices better than the other, um, I, I, just he looks so much different with the football. And I mean, you know, we, we've established now for weeks, weeks on end, Mario Anderson. He's the guy. He's RB one. Cool. But you are right. Why did it take three or four weeks in season to figure that out? And uh, respectfully, my man. In regards to the DeCarrion Joiner situation, your questions about him, and I'm gonna respectfully not comment because every time I say something about DeCarrion Joiner, shit hits the fan. So I, I'm respectfully, I will not be commenting on anything DeCarrion Joiner for the rest of the season. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I got you. Appreciation of everything he's done for the program. Though. Yeah, ab- absolutely. To that point, appreciation for everything he's done. But uh, yeah, that's where I sit. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Guys, it ain't nothing personal to that caller. It ain't nothing personal to anybody else, but I ain't saying shit about the on Joiner no more. So, as far as I'm concerned, love DK. Happy for his contributions. I take nothing personally what he said, but uh, I ain't speaking on his name no more, bro, because every time I do, some shit hits the fan. I ain't doing it again. Nope. Hey, you win. You win. I ain't saying nothing about you no more. Nope. Not in the slightest. So, Good, bad, and different. I ain't saying a word. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't saying a word except, hey, thank you for your contributions. The Mayo Bowl was awesome. Thank you for being selfless, and that's it. I'm, I'm hey, all positive, all good vibes. Anyways, 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377 here on this, um, this Saturday, November the 4th. Gamecocks get a dub. South Carolina Gamecocks get a dub. Third win of the season, three and six. The dream of bowl eligibility is still alive. The dream of bowl eligibility is still alive. And again, guys, I expected a step back this year. I wasn't going to be surprised if South Carolina, I picked seven and five, weren't going to be surprised they regressed to six and six. But what we've been watching, what we've been watching is, is surprising. Eric, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, buddy? What's going on? Doing all right. Hey, man, I want, I want to touch on a few things. I wrote down some thoughts. I called in about three weeks ago. We talked mm. about a few things, and some people talked about it again today. They touched on the talent issue and stuff like that. But I wrote down my thoughts, so I don't sound like a complete dumbass, and I'm jumbled everywhere, okay? So I said this. I said, man, people need to be realistic. I sat back and thought about this. We lost Jaheim Bell, our best tight end, and our blocker. He's balling out in the big force at FSU. And then he lost our backup tight end in Stodner, too. We replaced one with Trey Knox, but we have no depth. Jordan Burch, our best defensive lineman, who's killing it in the Pac-12. Marshawn Lloyd, our premier back, is killing it in the Pac-12 yet again. And, hell, we didn't even have a run game until, what, three or four games in. And I know D.K. Joyner is the athlete, but he is not an SEC caliber running back. It's ridiculous to even think that we are playing two backup QBs at skill positions that we don't have the depth for a decent backup. Our O-line is down, what, 10 players to injuries and losing more depth every week, it seems. That alone shows the strength and conditioning issues. Wales has barely played a season, all season, limiting our deep threat, and now defense has no double up on the jet. So I think with healthy Juice Wales, the get and Nick Harbour in the mix, we could have been one of the most best-ranked dynamic offenses this season, honestly. It just seems like this team has no identity, no leaders, no fire. We wasted the best QB that ever played at SC. And we, when he could have been winning somewhere, helping that team to win record in the top five Heisman race. So that's my thought. Hey, drop the mic, man. I couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, if you watch the Duke game, Jaheim Bell single-handedly won the game. Yeah. Like, he took, like, five plays in a row, and he was bullying them. Like, he looked like a man among boys out there. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, I, with it, without that blocking, then yeah, I mean, to your to your point, man, gone. South Carolina was gutted in the portal, and for the most part, they just didn't. They they just didn't, didn't replace. replace yeah, they they just did not fill those voids, especially in the trenches, especially in the trenches. Uh, even, even with a decent, uh, you know, offensive line, like you know, we we, we could have, you know, I even don't have time to throw the ball. You know, he gets killed. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the hell he comes back every week. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hey, very, very, very well articulated and well said, my friend. Very much so. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Hey, I love listening to you, bud. You take it easy, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Guys, we'll take one more call here. We've been going for over an hour. Uh, we do this every single day on the Daily Crow, noon to two, in our daily mailbag segment at the end of that show. Guys, you can call in any time you want. Leave a voicemail, and I'll play it on the show. We'll get your thoughts, your feedback, everything else. Uh, maybe we should, we should start doing it. Maybe, maybe we get to some of these voicemails. We don't get in on the call-in show and play those on Monday. Call from? Kane Bay, stand up. Kane Bay, stand up. What's going on? Hey, Chris, what's up, man? I just got two points. Hey, my buddy, and I'm not going to name any names, Jamie from Kane Bay, he went to a big NIL event this summer with Dak Joyner. And that son of a bitch won't let me take that football and punt it across his fence where there should be. But secondly, hey, and I'll hang up after this. What are your thoughts on this? Where is your um, tweet today? Because I find it kind of interesting. It'd be great if you showcase those guys all during the Clemson game. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for the call. The DJ Swearinger tweet um, before the game when he said that it was – I'm paraphrasing here. So, you know, don't, don't quote me. But paraphrasing what Swearinger said, Two Spoon said, it is disgraceful that they are honoring the best teams in school history – during the Jacksonville State game. And, you know, to his point, I mean, I, I think that he's right. Now, I think that South Carolina, when they did that, they probably thought, okay, we're going to be having a good season. It's going to be another sellout. It's going to be a comfy win. It's going to be kind of a fun family day. Like, we don't have to worry about it. I, I think that's where their mindset probably was. But uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, Swearinger obviously was not very happy with it. You'd think you'd ask him before you made a decision like that, but I guess not. Guys, we'll take one more. We'll take one more. Kane Bay dominates the phone lines every week. So I love that, too. Those guys always call in. Uh, you know, give us feedback. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, Marshawn Lloyd did not suck. Marshawn Lloyd did not suck. No, he did not. He did not. But, you know, he left, and it is what it is, and I don't know. I don't know what they could do about it. Uh, Bird Toffley said, no disrespect to anyone, but come on, guys. This is a clown show. I don't know if he means the call-in show or Dave Cox football or whatever. I don't know. We're all clowns today, Call I suppose. From. Kyle from Jersey. There you go. Kyle from Jersey. You're on the air. Finally made it on the air. <laughs> I apologize it took so long, man. Apologize it took one. so long. It's all right. Going from out of state, figure you guys would never put me on. No, no, it's just it. The phone lines the stay ringing. That, I think the whole problem. I think game one, Beamer saw the writing on the wall. You posted online. Coach came out and said we're not ready against mm -hmm. UNC. Mm -hmm. And I think looking back, look at how Shane was that first first week. He saw it. He he knew it was going to happen. Just game one. And set the tone for the whole entire season. It's we never picked up the ball. Mm. Line never played. Defensive backs aren't there. We got one of the best quarterbacks in college football, and we can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, to your point, man, and I'll probably pose this question on social media, but you make a great point. Like I think back to Week One and what we saw against UNC, and I, I mean, I would ask people, do you think this team has gotten better since the North Carolina game? It's it's the same team. I mean, to, to me, it's the same team, bro, with the same problems. Uh, and to your point, that set the tone for the whole year, and that's what it's been. This team has been what it's been, what it's been all season, and it's and it's that's sad. I mean, that's genuinely sad. We're so used to seeing Shane Beamer's teams, you know, get better from week one to week thirteen and improve. And I, I just. I don't think this team's improved at all, man. I I think some guys have solidified themselves, like Xavier Leggett, obviously, and then Spencer Rattler, what he's done, and Amario Anderson's emerged. But as a whole, 
the characteristics of this team are what they are? Well, let's just hope for next year. Just got to hope for next year, man. Wait till next year. Wait till next year. Yes, sir. Praise up. Hey, appreciate you, man. Glad we finally got you in, my brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Take care. Great stuff. Great way to end the show, guys. We could go all day long, obviously. Again, I appreciate you all tuning in. We do this every single day, uh, noon to 2 on the Daily Crow, Monday through Friday. Guys, you're on YouTube. Probably many of you tuned in right now who are not subscribed. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Hit that bell icon so you get notifications when we go, to, when we go live. And hit the like button as well. It helps the show. It helps, uh, helps boost up our numbers. And Help people find the show that maybe they have not seen it before. Uh, also, this will pod this will drop via podcast form, guys, tomorrow morning. And we drop daily podcasts every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts under the name The Spurs Up Show. So be sure to go check us out there. And uh, guys, stay tuned to social media, content bleeding out of the eyeballs. And I'm going to go and try to find some joy. In the meantime, I'm probably going to STFU. So that being said, I'm out of here. Appreciate you all. We'll talk to you on Monday.